Hello everyone. So in this section of Pharmac series, I am Dr. Ankit. We will be discussing about a important aspect of pharmacology that is therapeutic drug monitoring. So in this section, we will discuss and have a wholesome idea of what do you mean by therapeutic drug monitoring, the definition, what are the prerequisite we require before doing TDM for a drug, the examples of the drugs that require TDM, in which conditions we should do TDM, that is indication, workflow of TDM, the importance of sample collection and the, ty uh, the time of sample collection and the type of sample correction before TDM, the machines or the pre-analytical part, how to interpret TDM, its limitation, and a new concept TDM versus TCI, that is target concentration, intervention so let's begin so what do you mean by tdm tdm is therapeutic drug monitoring and therapeutic drug monitoring it is a measurement of of plasma or it could be whole blood concentration and in this we determine the therapeutic range of a drug in most of the case scenario, the therapeutic range of a drug is ED50 to TD50. So ED50 stands for effective dose in 50% of population and TD is toxic dose in 50% of population which we sometimes call it as median effective dose and median toxic dose. And with the help of this, we take out the blood from an individual patient. We measure the blood plasma concentration of a drug and hence it is a tool for personalized drug therapy because we change the dose according to the need of a person. So it's a tool for personalized drug therapy TDM and the main goal of doing TDM is to promote safe and efficacious use of a drug. So this is in nutshell what TDM stands for. Now the next question is what is prerequisite? What all things we require before doing TDM? So prerequisite for TDM. So let's suppose we are we want to measure the plasma concentration of a drug whose safety margin is very good. Remember, if a person takes a safe drug, even in overdose, the toxicity is very unlikely because effective dose and toxic dose, they are very far away from each other. So therapeutic drug monitoring will be useless in that case. It is mainly done for a class of drugs which are narrow therapeutic index drug. Now, what do you mean by a narrow, th narrow therapeutic index drug? In simple word, narrow means low and therapeutic index means safety margin of a drug. So the drugs whose ED50 and TD50 are very near to each other, little bit increase in the dose can lead to toxicity and little bit reduction in dose will lead to loss of effect of a drug. So let's understand this by a diagram. So we will make a dose response curve. So here let's say we are giving log dose of a drug. And here we are measuring the response in 50% of population. So at a certain dose level, the drug is effective. We call it as effective dose. But if we increase the dose of this drug little bit, the drug will become toxic. So this midpoints, we can call it as ED50 and TD50 and this margin is therapeutic range. So if this margin is very low, we call the drug as narrow therapeutic index drug. Second prerequisite is that pharmacokinetic variability is there in a drug. Now this pharmacokinetic variability could be inter-individual, between two individual and intra-individual. That means if I am giving let's say 10 milligram of a dose to a person A and a person B, their plasma concentration will not be same. 
This is known as inter-individual variability. Now various factors can play why it causes inter-individual variability. The one common cause is genetic variability. Let's take an example. There is a drug known as warfarin. Warfarin is metabolized by CYP2C9 enzyme. In some people, it is present in higher amount. In some people, it is present in lower amount. So both individual will not achieve the same plasma concentration. So the genetic makeup is different. Now this variability can be because of intra-individual, same individual also. It could be because of diseases, drug interaction, food interaction, the timing when the patient is taking a drug, before food, after food, morning time, night time. So all these things can lead to variability. The third thing why we do TDM is there must be linear correlation between plasma concentration of a drug and its clinical effect. So this is the main assumption and prerequisite of doing TDM. Remember if plasma concentration does not relate with the toxicity or effect of a drug then there is no point of doing TDM because we assume that let's say plasma concentration is above TD, toxic dose. We assume that most of the people will experience a toxic effect. If it is not, if the people are not uh, having toxic effect, there is no point of doing TDM in that case. So because of this reason, we do TDM and hence for the drug, if we are doing TDM, there must be established earlier established therapeutic range. So we must know the therapeutic range of a drug. Let's say if I say therapeutic range of phenytoin is between 10 to 20 grams milligrams per liter. We should know this. If we don't know which concentration we are going to measure. And lastly, TDM is a costly affair. So the cost effectiveness must be analyzed before doing TDM. This is the main hurdle of why not most of the settings don't do TDM because of the cost factor. So patient factors, patient is willing to pay the cost or the hospital is bearing a cost or some way in between insurance should help. Insurance companies should take up the cost of therapeutic drug monitoring. So let's talk about which drugs require TDM. So we can remember with the help of a small mnemonic. The mnemonic could be LATH, DATH, CC. So these are the drugs which require uh, monitoring. So we will write lithium, an antibiotic aminoglycoside, especially in the cases of renal failure, anti-epileptic drug, anti-asthma drug theophylline, digoxin, very commonly done. Antipsychotic drugs, especially like clozapine, requires monitoring. Antiarrhythmic drug, because of their toxicity concern. Tricyclic antidepressants, they have narrow therapeutic range, but it's point to be noted, not SSRI. SSRI are new antidepressant drug, their safety margin is very good. So, while tricyclic antidepressant, they have a narrow therapeutic margin. Hence, we only do therapeutic drug monitoring in cases of tricyclic antidepressant, not SSRI. Then all cancer drugs, obviously, we know that they will be toxic drug even in the normal therapeutic range. And lastly, a very important class of drug known as calcineurin inhibitor, which contains cyclosporin and tacrolimus. Most of the time, these drugs are given in organ transplant patient to prevent graft versus host disease. So in their case, remember both efficacy and safety, both is important because they can be toxic, nephrotoxic and loss of effect can lead to transplant rejection also. So this is the first point we have already written that TDM is done both for assessing safety as well as efficacy. So let's see what are the indications of doing TDM. Now, the main, there are mainly three indications of doing therapeutic drug monitoring. 
the first is we want to assess the toxicity of a drug let's say we want to there is a patient who is suffering from an arrhythmia and we gave a very high dose of lignocaine or amiodarone so can we say lignocaine and amiodarone plasma concentration will increase and after attaining a certain plasma concentration it will come to the normal therapeutic range so in cases of this anti arrhythmic drug initial high concentration can precipitate another form of arrhythmia due to anti anti arrhythmic drug so toxicity is very important in cases of anti arrhythmic drug so we want to diagnose toxicity or we want to avoid toxicity both are important and we will be taking the example of anti arrhythmic drug later on the next is we want to see how to dose an individual to decide a dosing regimen for an individual we do tdm so we can do loading dose calculation from here with the help of therapeutic drug monitoring we can adjust the steady state concentration adjust steady state concentration now steady state concentration is achieved when we are giving maintenance dose to an individual and lastly we can also forecast the dose let's say i have just given only one dose and i can forecast what will be the dose after of a drug after 6 hours so this initial concentration i have to measure this i will measure with the help of therapeutic drug monitoring and we will discuss forecasting is very important in cases of aminoglycoside antibiotics and the last purpose of doing therapeutic drug monitoring itself is monitoring of a drug and why we want to do monitoring because we want to check compliance whether the patient is taking a drug on regular basis or not let's say a patient forget to take phenytoin or anti epileptic drug that patient came to emergency with scissors the first thing which comes in our mind that whether the patient has taken a drug or not so we want to ensure compliance let's say the phenytoin blood levels are very low they are below effective dose can we say that the patient must have missed the dose of phenytoin second point when the patient is under treatment we want to monitor we can't take a risk of fluctuation in the dose especially in cases of cyclosporin and tacrolimus or anti cancer drugs and lastly failure of therapy now failure of therapy is an another aspect of tdm let's say the drug is in between therapeutic range but still the disease is not responding let's say the patient is having infection and you started aminoglycoside antibiotics you check that the aminoglycoside is within therapeutic range but still the patient infection has not been controlled so can we say that there is a failure of drug therapy so tdm is used for monitoring so let's see how we do tdm so the workflow of tdm is in can be divided into three or four simple step so we have to do pre analytical workup that means at what time we should collect sample with sample we should collect and during sample collection time whether the patient was having any toxicity any failure of response why we need to collect a sample size sample so clinical feature of the patient is also important for pre analytical workup before taking sample it is very important see whether the patient how the patient is suffering right now whether he is improving whether he is worsening or stabilized so that points must be written down when we are collecting a sample from a patient after that we do analytical method we analyze we analyze this blood or plasma sample and we will establish the plasma concentration of the drug by various techniques which we are going to discuss like lcms chromatographic techniques 
then the very important point as a doctor or as a clinician or as a healthcare worker how to interpret now interpretation of plasma concentration alone sometimes is not sufficient so interpretation requires many other aspect like albumin concentration like electrolyte concentration in cases of digoxin the patient's factors so that we are going to discuss and lastly after obtaining all these information with the help of clinician a pharmacologist must make a comprehensive clinical judgment so let's talk about all these things in little bit greater depth so first is sample collection time so sample collection time for most of the drugs we take the sample at steady state of a drug is achieved now remember a steady state of a drug is achieved after 4 to 5 half lives of a drug so let's say if you are taking lithium and lithium has a half life of 1 day so its steady state concentration will be achieved after 4 to 5 days and then we will take a blood sample and even in this steady state concentration when the patient is taking a drug the concentration will increase that is c peak and when the person is not taking let's say there is a time interval has occurred there will be c trough before the next dose before the next dose there will be trough level of a drug so at steady state concentration most of the time we take c trough concentration for most of the drugs we take c trough concentration so can we say c trough concentration will be that concentration which is just before the next dose just before the next dose and why what is the advantage of uh, taking the c trough concentration because it is the point of least variability c trough concentration is a point of least variability at steady state concentration remember there might be more fluctuation in c peak concentration depending upon the absorption depending upon the dose but c trough remains in not variable the, there is no change in c trough concentration that is the main reason why we take c trough concentration and the second point we must remember let's take an example of lithium lithium has a half life of 24 hours let's say so can we say at and lithium is given once a day to our patient and we give lithium at night time the reason is lithium causes tremors it causes sedation so at night time it's convenient to take the patient will experience less adverse effect of lithium now let's say the patient has already achieved steady state concentration after 4 to 5 half life of lithium now the patient takes lithium its c peak concentration is achieved can we say after 24 hours c trough concentration of lithium will be achieved then again c peak then again c trough so ideally with lithium we should take blood sample let's say patient has taken the drug at night today's night today tonight the patient has taken a drug so ideally we should take sample next day at night time night time sampling will be inconvenient for the patient it will be inconvenient for the doctor to take because lithium is given at night and c trough will take 24 hours so sometimes for the sake of convenience we can change the time of sampling and in case of lithium we take sample after 12 hours of dose so if i will take the sample after 12 hours it will be somewhere in between and why we take the sample just for convenience and there are methods and calculation by which we can forecast the c trough concentration okay ultimately we have to calculate c trough but for convenience we can take sample initially and we can forecast and calculate c trough there are various methods 
and hence with lithium we take the sample in morning so patient takes lithium at night after 12 hours in the morning we take the sample of lithium the next point is sometimes we take the sample before steady state concentration is achieved before steady state concentration is achieved sometimes we take the sample let's take an example let's say i am giving a drug anti arrhythmic drug amiodarone or lignocaine anti arrhythmic drug now let's say the half life of amiodarone is 60 days so its half life its uh, plasma concentration will be achieved after 4 to 5 half lives and half life of amiodarone is 60 days so don't you think its steady state concentration will achieve 60 into 4 after around 8 months so we cannot wait with amiodarone obviously to achieve its steady state concentration that is why drugs like amiodarone and lignocaine which are given for the treatment of arrhythmia requires a little bit higher dose that is loading dose and loading dose is given to achieve this steady state concentration rapidly so in cases of anti arrhythmic drug we can take the sample before steady state concentration is achieved and we will write why in anti arrhythmic because little bit increase in the dose of anti arrhythmic drug itself can precipitate arrhythmia let's say the little bit higher dose is achieved during loading dose this amiodarone can precipitate arrhythmia because it is more than the steady state concentration so if there is a concern of toxicity with initial dose or loading dose in like in cases of anti arrhythmic we take sample before steady state concentration the second reason is let's say i have given amino glycoside antibiotic and amino glycoside shows a pattern of killing in antibiotics that is concentration dependent killing cdk now concentration dependent killing so just i have given amino glycoside its concentration will after first dose it will begin to fall now with amino glycoside c truff is why it is important because if c truff is below the therapeutic range it will tell us that the bacteria is not going to kill so amiodar amino glycoside only kill bacteria when the concentration is very high so we want to forecast we want to forecast the minimum or c truff concentration of an of a drug we can take sample a little bit initially so in cases of amino glycoside antibiotic it shows concentration dependent killing that means very high concentration kills a bacteria and in this case we want to forecast what will be the minimum concentration of amino glycoside c truff because c truff will not kill a bacteria and if we know that after 12 hours let's say this will be the c truff concentration we will ensure that we should repeat a drug before this c truff is achieved so c truff if we know it will be achieved after 12 hour we will try to repeat the dose before it and again we will produce a high concentration of amino glycoside so that infection can be killed the third point of sampling is we have to take certain precautions that precaution says that drugs which shows drugs which show very high distribution into organs let's say i have given a drug to my patient and this drug has a property it will not remain in the blood vessel it will suddenly enter into the organs that means the drug has a very high volume of distribution so how the plasma concentration will vary let's say i have given a drug first dose it suddenly the concentration will fall because of distribution into the organ and then slowly slowly concentration will fall because of elimination 
so first phase when high volume of distribution of a drug is there is sudden fall in concentration now elimination occurs from blood okay elimination occurs from blood and this part of elimination is required by us because distribution happens only once elimination occurs slowly now i will repeat the dose and maintain the concentration between this therapeutic range so if a drug is having high volume of distribution let's take an example vancomycin digoxin for taking the blood sample we should ignore this distribution phase what is important for us is this elimination phase which is present in the blood so vancomycin when you are doing a dosing after the first dose we should wait for 2 to 4 hours because initial 2 to 4 hours there is distribution phase the drug is going into the organ that is useless for us what is important for us in therapeutic drug monitoring the plasma concentration similarly with digoxin we should wait for at least 6 hours after taking after just giving the dose next point in tdm is for long t half drugs let's say there is a drug known as amiodarone amiodarone has a half life of 60 days agree now if a drug is having very long half life can we say its plasma concentration will fall very very slowly let's say i am repeating the dose very slowly so in cases of long half life drugs there is very there is there is very less fluctuation between c peak concentration and c trough concentration so it will appear just like this i'll draw a diagram again for you it will appear like this now in long half life drug it is very difficult to determine c trough concentration it is very difficult to determine which is the c trough concentration so what we do we in cases of long half life drug we can take sample at any time we can take sample at any time and sometimes we call this concentration as c average concentration so instead of c trough concentration we use c average concentration last point with specific example you have to understand there are certain specific consideration with the drug before doing tdm specific concentration uh, specific consideration with the drug now there is a drug known as phenytoin now phenytoin is highly albumin bound drug so when we are doing therapeutic drug monitoring with phenytoin we must report plasma albumin concentration also and we must report the bound versus free fraction of albumin of phenytoin in the blood now the point is that if there is little bit lesser amount of albumin in the blood can we say the free fraction of a drug increases free fraction increases when there is fall in albumin level i'll give you a very beautiful example if if there is only 10 to 20% variation in albumin level it can double the free fraction of a drug and free fraction of a drug enters into the organ and if it is entering into unwanted organ it can lead to toxicity so these are all the consideration when you are taking the sample during tdm now the next point is pre analytical consideration
so in pre analytical consideration remember what is more important for us is accuracy and precision accuracy and precision of our result can be affected by can be affected by serum separators so when you are separating the serum from whole blood the concentration of a drug might be affected hence serum separator must be avoided when we are taking sample before analysis it's better to do centrifugation of whole blood so it's better to do centrifugation of whole blood when you are doing tdm now apart from this other factors like if you have taken a sample and you will be analyzing the sample tomorrow so so the storage temperature storage area the temperature where you have stored this sample handling all these factors play into role and it can be a source of inaccuracy or imprecision so which analytical methods generally we use for tdm so we can use various immuno assays or we can use chromatographic techniques nowadays we don't prefer to do immuno assays we prefer to do chromatographic technique because in immuno assays even metabolites can be detected are also detected plus their accuracy their range their precision is lesser as compared to chromatographic technique so various chromatographic techniques which is employed in most of the hospital setting is high pressure liquid chromatography ultra high pressure liquid chromatography lcms or tandem mass spectrometry these are all the techniques lcms is a very sensitive and a very specific method but the drawback is the cost of lcms as compared to hplc is higher so how to interpret the result of tdm interpretation of tdm so for that first point we must interpret whatever the plasma concentration we are getting in tdm we should be it should be reported as range and not as a single digit value it should be reported as a range not as a point estimate okay and if possible it should be reported as a range with confidence interval and margin of error how much error we are expecting from our analytical technique next point is tdm results what we are getting they are always surrogate for clinical judgment remember clinical judgment is more superior what we are getting from the result of plasma concentration let's take an example that say the patient's phenytoin phenytoin therapeutic range is 10 to 20 and the patient is having tremors and when we check the plasma concentration of phenytoin in that patient it found to be 30 Now remember yes it seems like that phenytoin is present in higher blood level as compared to 10 to 20 we are finding in 30 and the patient is having tremors which is the typical toxic effect of phenytoin now here sometimes a clinician would say that it is not because of phenytoin it could be because of some other therapeutic intervention we are doing remember in that case clinical judgment always takes the priority okay so clinical judgment always takes the priority over tdm so the last section is second last section is limitations of tdm 
in case of tdm the first major limitation is there is no validated therapeutic range for most of the drugs even there is a study says that all anti epileptic drugs we know there is a therapeutic range td50 to td50 even this therapeutic range it has been shown that if we keep the drug between this therapeutic range most of the patients still experience toxicity and still experience loss of effect so these therapeutic range are most of the time not validated not validated and it has been shown that therapeutic drug monitoring in cases of anti epileptic drug various studies have shown that they do not provide any benefit more benefit as compared to in terms of safety and efficacy with respect to if we don't do tdm next point is sa sensitivity is a major limitation and there is sometimes poor validation of these sa sensitivities like we are preparing a machine for hplc its sensitivity is sometimes not what we require is what to do with active metabolites so if a drug has a active metabolite which can also lead to toxicity it is very difficult to measure the plasma concentration of all active metabolites of a drug so that is why tdm is generally not done in cases of pro drugs a drugs may in making many active metabolites cost is a major factor why it is still not very commonly used the last point is efficacy so as discussed even the efficacy of tdm whether doing tdm can benefit our patient is still a questionable area a area of research let's take an example it has been shown certain studies have shown that tdm with anti epileptic drugs generally do not improve outcomes but for the safer side still we do tdm so overall the outcome is not improved so there is a new concept nowadays coming instead of tdm there is a new concept coming that is therapeutic sorry target concentration intervention tci intervention in simple word in therapeutic drug monitoring we were just checking the pharmacokinetics or the blood levels of drug in target concentration intervention we correlate this pharmacokinetic or therapeutic range with the pharmacodynamic response of a drug now what does it mean let's understand so tdm therapeutic drug monitoring it is a traditional concept and it relies on therapeutic range so therapeutic range you know is the plasma concentration only while target concentration intervention it is a scientific pkpd approach pkpd stands for pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic approach it takes into account into account of various pk parameter not just plasma concentration so these various pk parameters can be volume of distribution clearance capacity half life and then it we calculate what could be the target concentration and we correlate with the efficacy of a drug efficacy we can say is pharmacodynamics of a drug so this is in simple word what is tci let's make it simpler a little bit simpler let's say in pharmacokinetics what we measure is plasma concentration with time with time let's say i have given a drug with time its plasma concentration will fall and what we do in pharmacodynamics we check this plasma concentration and 
we correlate with response of a drug. So in pharmacodynamics, we make concentration response curve. In pharmacokinetic, we make concentration time curve. So if we can, if we can, uh, in pharmacodynamic, can we say we use dose response curve, concentration response curve or dose response curve? So most of the time, how do we measure response? Most of the time we use a model known as Emacs model. In Emacs model, we check the maximum effect into target concentration divided by Km plus target concentration. Now what is this formula? This formula is simple, is a very simple formula just like michaelis menten equation which we do in any pharmacodynamics. What we are doing in pharmacokinetics? We calculate loading dose that is volume of distribution into target concentration by and maintenance dose. That is clearance into target concentration. So in target concentration strategy, we replace this concentration with loading dose and maintenance dose. Okay. And we will try to now correlate between the loading dose and VD with Emacs that is the maximum effect. And we try to correlate maintenance dose and clearance capacity with Emacs. Okay, so we can replace this formula in cases of target concentration strategy. So let's talk about how do we do target concentration intervention. So algorithm of target concentration intervention. So how we do it? First we obtain that what is the desired efficacy. How much effect we want from a drug? Let's say with a drug, I want that with phenytoin, let's take an example that with, with antipsychotic, I want that this much effect of a drug should come. That let's, we can assume like this, that there should be no episodes of rebound psychosis in a patient. So we obtain a desired efficacy let's say less than one episodes per year that is the efficacy we can write it as emax what we desire now we make a pd model we can make a pd model and we can choose target concentration now how we will choose the target concentration we can we will calculate loading dose divided by vd or we will calculate maintenance dose divided by clearance capacity. Okay. Okay. I'll give you another example. Let's say with warfarin, I want to maintain this much amount of INR in my patient. So that INR should be obtained at what concentration? That concentration I will determine from my PK study, pharmacokinetic study. And this was PD study. Okay. Now I will try to obtain VD and CL value, volume of distribution and clearance capacity value. How I can obtain? By conducting a population pharmacokinetic study. I will give this drug in many people, calculate VD and CL, and I will take a range with confidence interval that this is the actual value of VD and CL. Or I can take the specific type of population or cohort in which the drug I want to specifically give. Let's say renal failure patient, children, old age. So I can also take group or covariate model. Okay. Rarely it is done for an individual. So VD and CL is rarely done from an individual patient. Either we do general for population pharmacokinetic study or we take a simple specific cohort of our people known as group or core covariate model then i will calculate loading dose and maintenance dose okay i will calculate the loading dose and maintenance dose 
that will achieve the steady state concentration in that individual in one individual because that one individual clearance capacity and vd is determined okay now after that i will use this loading dose and maintenance dose to determine and correlate what is the effect produced by the drug so that effect could be inr scissor free interval reduction in psychosis episode so this is a combination of pk and pd parameters so implication a very important example with the target concentration intervention a very beautiful example we can take of a drug known as mycophenolate mofetil now mycophenolate mofetil there are three landmark trials if you will search the literature there are three landmark trials of pkpd pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamics and in this three trials there were randomized control trial we obtained the dose that at this dose the emax is achieved we adjusted this dose according to bayesian methods on our specific group of cohort and when we use this dose in future reference patient it significantly reduced the risk of transplant rejection so tci target concentration intervention was found to be very useful with a drug known as mycophenolate mofetil so this is all you need to know about therapeutic drug monitoring and target concentration intervention so in nutshell therapeutic drug monitoring is just the measuring of plasma concentration the target concentration intervention is also when we are measuring this plasma concentration we calculate volume of distribution clearance of a patient we calculate loading dose and maintenance dose and we will use this dose and correlate with the desired effect in our individual that is pharmacodynamics